I'm Linda Viscardis, and this is the beautiful Linda White. Oh, thank you. And Linda White is a professional caregiver. She's a personal, personal support, support worker. worker. And, uh, and she's got a beautiful Irish accent. <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about personal care. So, Linda, I'd like you to start by um, talking about how dignity comes into the whole area of personal support. It's a big, large field, but I guess the most important thing is respecting people's rights. Mm. Um, you know, they have the right to refuse. They have the right to wear purple with black and pink if they choose. It's totally up to them. They have their own preferences and you need to be very respectful of that. Um, I think um, uh, giving them choices, lots and lots of choices, instead of sort of saying, well, you're wearing this today, sort of, you know, and if they have cognitive impairment, maybe giving them two or three choices, limiting it. Would you like to wear the black or the blue or the pink today? Um, always explaining what you're about to do before you do it and getting sort of a, an agreement, um, verbal or otherwise, to sort of proceed. Um, what happens when you have somebody, you, you want to respect their, their rights mm -hmm. to make their own decisions, but they're not really making a decision or you, you perceive that they're not really making a, a decision. Is that a decision? Just that they're not making a decision? Are they giving you the, the, uh, their voice for you to make the decision or how does that work? Um, I would say if it's a very, you have to kind of gauge and get to know. First of all, when you meet somebody new and you're working with them at the beginning, you have to get to know where they're at, whether they have the, the, the ability to say, no, I am not brushing my teeth today. Mm. Um, but if it's uh, a lot of uh, people with dementia, have a fear of water. So you can redirect, like stop, and then just reapproach in a whole different way. Mm. I um, had a gentleman that was um, a soldier, and he refused point blank to get out of bed. So I'd knock on the door and I'd go, it's 0700, time to get up. And he'd jump up out of bed and I said, get into the bathroom and get ready for the day. And off he'd go and he'd do it. You find <laughs> out the background and you, you adjust your care accordingly. I, that's that's wow. how I I take it anyway. So gosh, well that is amazing. So building rapport, it Can't really you know. comes comes together with the the dignity and rights. Yeah. So you get to know you get to know your client and you get to know about their family, their likes, their dislikes, and that you're not going to walk in straight away to somebody and say, okay, take all your clothes off and get into the shower. Mm. It's very, very hard for some people and you have to respect that. The first visit, if you get nowhere just to sit and have a conversation, that's perfectly okay. Wow. Explain why you're there and what you and what their preferences are, what you're going to do today. So what happens when um, somebody might have had a difficult relationship with another personal support worker in the past and their trust level is very low mm -hmm. what would you do in a case like that to help build that back up again um take it very slow and get to know them on a personal level mm -hmm. you know look at oh i see you've got a picture there of your granddaughter how old is she you know i have you know try and find some common ground and if it takes two weeks, if you get an arm done today, you get an arm washed today. You know, build that slowly, build it very slowly. Another lady I have, you get her into the bath and you'd feed her ice cream. If you go in the bath, are you colored a spa day? We're not going to have a bath, you're going to have a spa day today. You find the different ways, you, you find, there's always a way. It's like you've got a lock with about 12 keys, you have to find the right key. That's, that's the best wow. I can kind of. Can you speak about the energy that you bring into into the home when you arrive? What what your energy does? How it impacts your client? Um, first of all, I think it's important not to be judgmental um, and to be very open minded. We usually get um, you'll get a little bit of information before you go in, but you you've got to find your own sort of information about that person um, and get to know them and leave leave your baggage at the door 
and come in with a totally open mind. Mm. And, you know, with a lot of clients, it takes a good six months really to get into that, that sort of rapport where there's that trust. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to be here. I'll be on time. You know, if I say I'm going to be here at nine, I'll be here at nine. I won't be here at ten and not bother to call you because you have that. I I will give you that respect. Beautiful. Okay, because a lot of people they just come whenever they feel like it. Don't call ahead, and that straight away you're straight away you're you're at a disadvantage. Yeah, I I find that um, there are some supporters that will they don't see the importance of you know, doing what you say you're going to, going to do. So if I'm going to be there at nine o'clock, you can trust that I'm going to be there at nine o'clock. Yeah. Or if I'm, if I say I'm going to be there at nine o'clock and I can't be there at nine o'clock, I will, I'll you, let you know. Yeah. And, and then, and that's straight away. That's what I say to when I'm, I'm going out with new people, just a phone call. Because if you just rap on the door at 11 o'clock and they're not expecting you, straight away you've hit a wall. Exactly. Straight away, you're starting the relationship off on the wrong foot. And then what happens when you come in and you, um, you've you hit that wall? How does that impact how you're able the to whole, do your job? The whole, the whole situation. Or you just walk over and pick up the phone and start using it. You know, it doesn't matter what cognitive impairment the client has. You turn around and you say, would it be okay if I quickly used your telephone? It won't be long distance. I'm not talking to anybody. It's just so they know where I am. Wow. You know, may I have a quick look at your care plan? Where do you keep it? Do you mind if I sit down? You don't just come in, kick your shoes off, pick up the phone and plunk yourself, you know, on, on the couch. You treat everybody with that dignity and respect that they deserve, no matter what their, their cognitive impairment or their level of agreement. That's is. So, beautiful. So that, now I'd like to get into some, some fairly specific kinds of things, like yeah. what to do when. So um, we'll start with some fairly broad things and mm -hmm. then maybe get into some more specifics. But um, can you talk a little bit about that conversation that you have with your client? You, you already said about asking permission and whatnot, but just say, for instance, if the person has a visual impairment, mm -hmm. um, what, how do you go about providing the care and, have, and what kind of conversation are you having with the client at that time? Okay, so when you, if it's a new client or something, no matter what, uh, I guess you would just say, explain what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and when you're going to do it, and it, permission to proceed. Mm -hmm. So, okay, Linda, I'm just going to wash your face. Okay, and then I'm going to wash your ears. All little things. I'm just going to run the bath right now. You know, um, you, you just explain every step, everything you're, and, and get that, that it doesn't even have to be verbal. You know, a nod, an okay, proceed. An acknowledgement. Yeah. And, um, and I can imagine that if you had to leave the room or if you had to, you know, I don't know, if the person is sight impaired, um, and they don't see where you are. If you're moving around in the room, you might describe where you are or what you're doing okay. over there. I or... have somebody in, that have those specific needs and I, there's a constant rapport. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to get your clothes out. All right, I'm just going to put this garbage out. I'll be back in just a second, okay? I'm just going to turn your bath on and run it now. I'm just going to open the blind. It just comes automatically to me now because I've done it for so long with this person. But I'm just going to turn on your light when I get there. I'm just going to turn on. I don't turn on the lights and open the blinds and then say, hi, how are you? Hi, it's me. You know, I'm just going to turn on the light. Is that OK? Would you like music today? Mm. You know, so every little thing. But it just comes. But everything you're about to do and be aware of loud noises because people with an impairment usually have heightened other senses so heightened hearing so banging drawers and banging stuff without any explanation another thing is a fly in the room oh. buzzing around the head can drive them crazy they can't see it but they know it's there like little things just try very hard but try to put yourself in their position wow that's so great i'm also thinking about people who have high anxiety so knowing that there's somebody with high anxiety that there you know there might be something that's bothering them but you might not know because they're so anxious that they're not able to tell you mm -hmm. 
um, you just you just know that when you come in the door, even though you're bringing a positive energy and you can see or you can feel that there's that anxiety is there. Mm -hmm. What would you do in a case like that when you know that the person is feeling that high anxiety? Before I start, I try to get them calm. So if they're at a 10, I come in at a two. Yeah. What do you need today? What's wrong? Is there anything I can do to help you? You know, and just gently rubbing the arm and, you know, it's okay, just relax. We're not gonna do anything that you don't wanna do. You know, is there anything I can help you with? Do you need something right now? That's sort of very calm mm. and sort of you will see. And how about we take a deep breath and calm down? Mm. You know, and you can sometimes see the, yeah. them relax. Yeah. And I'm thinking that um, when you use that approach, a person who is highly anxious and who is not really able to communicate well when they're anxious, when they calm down, do you find that they communicate better? That they're yes. they're able to open up more? Yes, yes. Um, I think you've got to give them time and you've got to give them space and you've got to give them that respect. Um, and don't proceed until until you see that sort mm. of calm calm down and relax. You know. Where do you see humor in in how you provide care? Do you, do you mm. use humor a lot? Sometimes mm -hmm. it depends on you know if there was it was an anxious day or depending on the person. But usually, yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just find what everybody for what's funny to one person isn't to the other. But you find again what what makes that person tick, and you know you can introduce humor into it for That's sure. That's amazing. Now I'd like to get to some more specific things. Mm -hmm. um, what about when you're um, say you're you've got a client and um they've got a, a team of people that are supporting them mm -hmm. and uh so there's all other people who are providing whatever level of care they mm -hmm. provide whatever whatever it is that they're supposed to be focusing mm -hmm. on but you're you come in and you see that you know maybe some of the clothing isn't as in good repair as you'd like or um there's some things missing that you, you feel should be there like I'm thinking equipment like maybe gloves or just different things like that or it could be that um, you know it's it's getting cold and I can't find a, a cardigan or these kinds of things what how do you deal with those kinds of situations when you come in and you observe that there's something lacking or there's something that isn't quite up to your level of care if there's a sort of a person in the home that kind of oversees that person's care, kind of get, try to communicate with them. You know, I'm concerned about this and that shouldn't, you know, is missing or do you know where this is? Or we could use some more socks because our socks have all holes in them or his socks or whatever. Um, and unfortunately, if it doesn't go from there, I have to report to my supervisor okay. and work. So that, I'm supposed to go there first, but I would, try and get it sorted out within the team and then if that didn't work then if it was a real concern then go to the so some situations there's just the person that you're supporting that's there there's mm -hmm. no other person in the home but they have a communication book mm -hmm. um how would you use a communication book to to communicate these things what would you what would you do what would be the expectation i guess about that kind of communication I <laughs> Communication books are, are wonderful. They're very wonderful. Supposing a daughter comes in like once a week to get the groceries and pick up stuff you need. I guess you'd have to try to be specific. They don't need to know. I played the piano and Robert listened all day and then we had tea and cookies. Yeah. I know. Because then they have to read an awful lot of stuff. Try to be relevant and to the point, you know, and maybe ask for a response so they are in initial so you know they've read it and understood. Try and get some feedback from them but you know Robert needs new socks today and um, I noticed that all of his old ones have holes in them could you pick up some more or whatever that might be and look for an answer beautiful yeah I love the idea of getting an answer because there's yes. nothing more frustrating than I just today. I don't know did anybody read it yes yes oh. an initial or something yes. some sort of a response back I got your message and I don't agree with you that's fine yes I'll buy socks <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> yeah that's good yeah, yeah. Okay, so even more specific, um, a, a situation where 
say for instance there's um maybe there i don't know maybe there's a few uh psws that are going into the home um or there's a few people who are providing different types of support mm -hmm. and you notice that some of the personal care like the really intimate personal care you've got a standard of 10 linda and i know you like your standard <laughs> up to a standard of 10 is probably at around 20. but what if you notice that that there isn't that level, level of care yeah that happened actually the other day i just left a highlighted note oh. attention everybody please pay more attention to peri care on this person it is very important and i noticed it was lacking yeah if you have any questions phone me at home i'll go through it with you oh really yeah wow yeah because that is something that i think from what i understand you know first of all it's not acceptable no um that that's it's has just to be, slipping yeah and it's it's if you're if you're certified a personal support worker you've been taught how to do proper okay well that was going to be my care. question like we have the standard of 10 or a, a linda standard of 20 but if it's not up to up to that level is it because they haven't been taught how to do it i think not not always i think it's just people cut corners mm. um and just don't do their job you know and it's it's very very important because it looking at the broader picture it can affect that person's health because yeah. particularly with women they can end up with urinary tract infections it can cause isolation because they smell yeah and therefore it can lead to depression because they are isolated so you not doing your job properly can lead to a really horrible situation for that person wow you're responsible that person could end up well, i'm not inviting mum for for dinner tonight like she just has a terrible odor to her we we'll just and that has happened wow and when you consider that that some of the people that you support would be using disposable briefs yes that makes it even more so right yeah. because they are in a soiled and they're depending on you exactly and they can't do it themselves no and they don't have a voice you are it's up to you to make sure that that person is meticulously clean wow and there must be some sense of um uh joy some kind of positive when you realize that you've gotten your your person all ready for the day and they're spick and span and they're happy and they're you know they're all ready for the day can you talk a little bit about that how you feel when when all of that's been done and it's been done to that high standard you see it in the person you see it in their connections with people you go back in and you say oh guess what i was out you know i did this i did that and you know or you take them out and they're 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 daughter or their oh you look so nice today mm. mom you know so you know you've done their hair nicely and brushed their teeth and put on a little jewelry or whatever it might be mm. and you know they that you get that feedback you do get it comes back a hundred times you do your job well it's like it's like a present every day mm. it really is that's amazing uh -huh. do you have any other specific things like about you mentioned about you know just rubbing a person's arm if they're feeling anxious but do you have any other specific suggestions around touch and how a, a simple touch might be what's needed or when you would use touch or when you would avoid using touch because some people are very sensitive mm -hmm. and you, wouldn't want again you gauge you know you're going in maybe to an 85 year old man for the first time and he's never been naked in front of anybody apart from his mom when he was a baby and his wife who he's been married to for 50 60 yeah. years and it's very hard it's very difficult you try and put that person at ease you know while they're undressing you throw a little towel over their lap and when they're in the shower you do the same thing they never have to be totally undressed you try and create a level that they're comfortable with nice. you know you try and turn your back you try and you know always keep them covered up as with anybody when i'm doing personal care on anybody i never have them totally naked ever they're, they're always covered at some point. And if you think about that yourself, like if you're, if you're doing um, peri care, you would always keep the top half covered mm -hmm. and always explain exactly what you're going to do. Beautiful, wow. Yeah. Also, when you're giving care, 
You're not just washing somebody and putting cream on them. It's your that's your opportunity for to find lumps, bumps, bruises, changes. So oh, you're looking okay. at the skin, you're feeling that lump wasn't there yesterday. Whoa, that's a big where did that bruise come from on the side? And if you find anything like that, obviously you would document it. But you're you're using so you're using your, your touch, you're using your smell and you're using your sight. Wow. If something is wrong. That, that urine smells very strong today. Yeah, that's a really wrong. good thing to know. Yeah. Do you ever do documentation with like a phone, like a picture? Do you no. do you don't do anything no. like that? Just no. writing in the in the no. document. Write it that. and then um, O R R observe, report, record. Okay. That's my right. And if you observe something like a bump or a bruise or whatever who is like who do you report to do you just if there's somebody in the home do you report to them do you I write would it report in a communication to somebody book in the or? home and in the communication book so the family know and then i would record it on my the back of my documentation okay which then goes to the office and is kept for five years i think okay yeah if it was something very serious i would phone the office right away and get hold of a supervisor and say this person has you know, a massive unexplained bruise Page. on their back, which I've had. I've had a lady that had a stroke and she was black and blue and I got her on her own and I said, what's happening? She said, my husband. Oh. So I was able to get her out of there. But, you know, that sort of stuff, you, you don't, if, if you feel there's abuse at, at, any, at any rate, you must report. Yes. But not only yes. that, you're looking for any new, with somebody that's incontinent, uh, you're looking for, you know, any soreness or redness yes, that's you right. know so it doesn't skin breakdown doesn't get any worse right yeah. right and then keeping kind of on top of it to make sure that it's starting to heal yeah. and if there's any kind of change in, in uh, if it has to be a uh, nursing called in phone and say listen I'm concerned about this wound can we call nursing in okay and would you do that oh you? absolutely okay that's yeah. really good to know yeah okay yeah. the case manager or if somebody's getting more rigid um, they're having pain. I can call in and say, I suggest that the case manager looking at getting phys physio in or this person isn't right. managing as well in the tub, maybe get an occupational therapist to come in right. and review the equipment in the home and suggest new things. Okay, so would you call the access centre directly or no, through your not, supervisor? No, through the supervisor. Okay. I'd, I'd call the supervisor and say, I noticed this yes. and um, I'm concerned and I think they would benefit from having and 90% okay. of the time that works. Okay, that's good to know yeah. too. Yeah, it's good to know that that ch uh, chain of communication, right? To, yeah, to but I'm once I'm I'm like a dog with a bone. <laughs> once I get <laughs> it, I follow up and say, "Did you talk to the case manager? What did they say?" Like I don't let it just right. uh, there. I've done my bit. Right. You know, so I usually wait and see what the feedback was. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that you can think of that we should be aware of? Uh, off the top of my head, probably when I get in my car, there'll be a hundred, <laughs> but no, I think we've pretty much covered okay. dignity, respect, um, respect for their culture, their, uh, you know, you've got to respect, you're in their home mm -hmm. and, and it's up to that person, even if it's weird, <laughs> that's what they like. Right. You, go, you do it. And it's their weird, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Once it's legal, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> yes, we must say that it has to be legal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's really great. Okay. Mm. Well, thank you very much for okay. spending this time with me today, <laughs> Linda. I really welcome. appreciate it. And I know that this conversation will be really helpful for a lot of people. Good. Good. Yeah. Thank good. you so much. All right. Okay.